Hey there everybody, I'm here today with a comparing video, this time between a Motown, Michael Jackson Motown 45 record, as well as the, um, the Beatles 45 record from the album The Revolver Anniversary Edition, which has two of their singles on it from the past masters, which I'll get into that in a little bit. So anyways, the, um, I got the Michael Jackson Motown 45 record from a friend of mine when I was in college, and this is the very first record I got in my collection, as well as the very first 45 record, and this is what started it all, which is why this record is the most special to me. It's a used record, though, so it has a lot of scratches on it, as you can tell, just like with my other two 45s records, but still runs just as well as should. And speaking of condition, um, this Beatles 45 record from the Revolver Anniversary Edition, um, this is the only 45 record I have that's, that came in brand new, that came in brand new condition, like it's brand new. The other three, whereas this one, as well as my other Beatles 45 record and the Ringo Starr's Photograph 45 record, those ones I got used. This one I got brand new. So, yeah. And then as for this record, I got this one for Christmas. It came in the the Revolver Anniversary Edition. With the Revolver Anniversary Edition record in that pack. So, yeah. And anyways, right off the bat, these two are similar. Same length, obviously. And they're both small because they have singles on it. Whereas um, a full-size record is an album. These two are just the singles. No, and then one mage, and then obviously the most obvious difference is this one doesn't have much scratches on it. There's very little scratches on it since it's brand new and in good condition on it, so there's not really any scratches. This one, just like a Milo 245, has scratches on it because it's a used record. But um, with the other two 45 records I have, those ones I got used. Like, they were used when I got them for Christmas. They came in used condition. This one is used because, um, because my friend used to, my friend, my friend who gave it to me um, used to listen to it. And then when she realized I liked records, she decided to give this to me when I was in college. So, yeah, and it's a really nice record. Obviously, another obvious difference is this record has a hole in it, like in the middle, like a big hole right there. This one, like on my other records, just have like a tiny little hole right there. This one is like black and gray, the label. This one's blue and white, because this is from Motown. And then for this one, um, this one has two of Michael Jackson's singles on it from the album Motown, which is side one, correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't say it, I don't know why. I don't know why the 45s don't say the sides, like it's just weird. Um, but on this side it says, um, is Rock and Robin, and then on this side is, um, Love is Here and Now You're Gone. And it has the credits on here, like, um, this one was produced by Mel Larson and Jerry Marcellino, and this was arranged by James Carmichael, and, um, actually, um, I actually just made a mistake, I just realized Motown is not the name of this album, that's just the name of the studio that this was recorded in, so I do apologize for the mistake, um, both these songs actually come from the album um, Gotta Be There. It's not from the album Motown. I always thought that was the name of the album because it says Motown on here, but Motown is the record company this was recorded in. It's not the album, so I do apologize. But yeah, it's from the album Gotta Be There, both these singles. And then this one, it says J. Thomas underneath that song. Rock and Robin underneath this one. B. Holland, L. Dozier, and E. Holland, which I don't know who their full names are, and that's credit to Michael Jackson since he recorded it. Uh, Rock and Robin is two minutes and thirty seconds long. 
Love is here in Oregon is 2 minutes and 51 seconds. And then, uh, I'm trying to think. This one doesn't say the year was recorded in uh, for Rock and Robin. I gotta look that up. No, it actually it says the year it came out. This record came out in um, 1966. So yeah. And then this song, um, wait, forgot to read this part. This song, "Love Is Here" and "Oregon" was produced by Hal Davis, arranged by James Carmichael different producers of songs and that says Recordo Music ASCAP and there's the Motown logo that one says Joe Ben Music Company on the side BMI and yeah and then for this one this one has two of the Beatles singles from the past Masters album just like my other Beatles 45 record does Differences though the one I compared in the last video has um has um we can work it out on side one and then side two it has um is um day tripper for this one it's different side one is paperback writer side two is um rain and both songs are credited to John Lennon and Paul McCartney of course. And this was, of course, produced by George Martin, like with most of the Beatles records. Like with most of the Beatles records and like the high majority of their singles. Um, yeah. In fact, fun fact, every Beatles album was produced by George Martin except Let It Be. Let It Be, um, Let It Be was produced by Phil Spector. And then for their original album, when it was when it was originally called Get Back, it was produced by um, Glenn Johns. So yeah, interesting facts though. And then Paperback Writer and Rain, they were both recorded and released in um, 1966, the same year that these two singles came out from from Michael Jackson's album Gotta Be There. So yeah, and then this one's a Sony Tunes on it, um, and then there's more licensing, and that says the year 2022 because the, the Revolver Anniversary Edition album, that came out last year in 2022, and I'm trying to think what number album it is to get an Anniversary Edition. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember. I know the first Beatles album to get an Anniversary Edition was Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Arts Club Band, that came out, that was released in 2017, the second Beatles album, the Anniversary Edition, which every one of them, fun fact, is, is a 50 year anniversary, which means every time a Beatles album comes up in 50 years, it gets a 50th anniversary edition, just like how Linkin Park gets a 20th anniversary edition, Linkin Park released two 20th anniversary edition albums, first was Hybrid Theory, and then the latest, Meteor. The White Album Anniversary Edition, that was released in 2018. Abbey Road was the third Beatles album to get it, get an Anniversary Edition, that was released in 2019. Let It Be was the fourth Beatles album to get an Anniversary Edition, that was released in 2021. So that means Revolver's the fifth Beatles album, the fifth Beatles album to get an Anniversary Edition. And it was released last year. So yeah, just thought I'd give an interesting history about them. And yeah, and then one more thing I gotta show you before I end the video um, is the sleeves. This one came in this, the Revolver 45, um, or Pass Magic, whatever you wanna call it. This one came in the sleeve, this green Parlophone sleeve, which looks really nice. So this is actually a really nice sleeve. It's brand new, doesn't have any scratches on it. And it slides in easily, just like this. And plus, it's made of fabric, which is nice because the other sleeve I have, which has two, my other 245s in it, that one's made of paper. And with that one, you got to be very careful of it, otherwise, it'll rip. 
and then for this record when I got this from my friend at college it didn't come it it didn't come with a sleeve because my friend told me she had lost it so I had to get um had to pick up this sleeve which um this isn't a record sleeve it's actually from a binder but it does work with this record um I got this as like a temporary record sleeve until I could get an actual record sleeve which this sleeve right here is from the my my record I have on um, yellow submarine and to protect it but I still use this though to protect this record what I do with it is that for this record I, I put it in this this binder sleeve right here and then I slide it into and then once I put the record in this binder sleeve I just put it in, put it in this record sleeve just to give it more protection that's all because because I want to protect this record just because it's a used record and it has a lot of scratches on it so it didn't come used though my friend bought it brand new it just has scratches on it because she used to listen to this one a lot until she gave it to me so yeah I'm gonna put it back in the sleeve though just to show you how I do it hang on I gotta, I gotta set my camera down because it's very hard to do this one-handed it was easy to, do, easy to do the other record one-handed because it's a smaller sleeve but this one's a bigger sleeve so I'll try to do this live the camera bear with me I, bear with me people so this is how it works. Um, I slide in the sleeve like this. Fits nicely in there and it gives a nice protection. But to be on the safe side, I give a double protection by putting it in this sleeve, which I'll show over here. Slides in easily, just like that. I apologize if my shadow's in the way or if my hands are blocking the camera this is the best angle I can get so I do apologize bear with me and then and then I stick it in the upright position just to get the record to go in full and then it secures just like that so there you go and that's about it I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching goodbye